re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. When undergoing re-entry, space vehicles experience heat and g-forces due to encountering the atmosphere. Atmospheric entry altitude is defined as being 100 kilometers, whereas in fact the atmosphere does extend to around about 10,000 kilometers. Heat is caused by friction and by shock forces. The diagram comes from tests involved in the design of re-entry vehicles. The, you can see that the initial concept was essentially a rocket shape. The second idea was a blunt body concept with a rounded front, and you can see that the shock wave, rather than being at the very nose of the space vehicle, is moved some distance away. And the final two diagrams show refinements of these, including the classic shape of a man capsule as used today. Most space vehicles are designed with a blunt leading edge to create a shock wave ahead of the vehicle, and the shock wave keeps the main heating away from the surface of the vehicle because the main heating is associated with the shock wave. So by moving the shock wave some distance in front of the vehicle, you move the heat associated with the shock wave away from the skin of the vehicle. At the same time, the blunt shape also slows the vehicle's fall. Heat shields are used to protect the vehicle. Here you can see a heat shield after it has been used for re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. You can see that it is heavily scorched and pitted, but that the space capsule quite obviously survived the re-entry, so the heat shield did its job. Heat shields used for most spacecraft are called ablative heat shields, and they're called that because they work by burning away during re-entry so that the heat is taken away by the burning of the heat shield rather than being transferred to the occupants of the capsule. G-forces during re-entry are caused by the rapid deceleration of the vehicle when it encounters the atmosphere. You can see that the graph has three lines, normal zone, G-lock zone and death zone. The death zone is self-explanatory. That is the area for which the crew will die because of the G-forces during re-entry. G-lock zone is the area in which the crew will be unable to function because of the G-forces experience during re-entry and may cause the crew to die for other reasons, such as not being able to control the spacecraft. The normal zone is the area that is desirable for the maximum G-forces to be during re-entry. You can see from the graph also that for short periods of time, less than a few seconds, higher levels of G can be sustained, but that you don't want a sustained high G load. For anything greater than about 17 seconds, you want a maximum of approximately 5G to be experienced by the crew. Two higher G-forces can cause blackout or even death of the crew. During re-entry, the heat causes what is known as ionization blackout. It is caused by the hot ionized gas generated by the heat of re-entry, and this hot ionized gas blocks radio communication. There is an ideal angle for re-entry into the atmosphere. The steeper the angle of re-entry, the more rapid the deceleration, and therefore the higher the g-forces that will be experienced by the crew. Re-entry angle varies with spacecraft design, velocity and atmospheric factors, but is chosen so that the astronauts are subject to a maximum of about 3 to 4 g. The re-entry angle for the space shuttle was different from the re-entry angle for the returning Apollo astronauts, which was approximately 7 degrees. The space shuttle has a wider range of re-entry angles which vary with atmospheric conditions, velocity and several other factors. If the angle of re-entry is too steep, as is shown by the red line, the spacecraft will decelerate too quickly and may be damaged or destroyed by too higher temperatures or g-forces. To help mitigate the high g-forces, astronauts are restrained, as is shown in the diagram, in a recumbent position oriented so as to ensure blood is not forced away from the brain. For a spacecraft entering the atmosphere at too shallow an angle, the deceleration will be too low, 
so the spacecraft will potentially miss its landing zone. As well as this, heat shields are designed to work for a certain amount of time. And if the spacecraft decelerates more slowly, it spends a longer amount of time exposed to the hot gases, and this could cause failure of the heat shield. If the re-entry angle is much too shallow, the spacecraft can enter the outer atmosphere at orbital velocity without penetrating the denser atmosphere layers and not undergo significant braking. The spacecraft may continue on in an elliptical orbit, regaining altitude, go out into space and then re-enter the atmosphere after some time and end up landing in the wrong place. This is what is called a skip. If the spacecraft does not enter orbit but continues into space, this is what is referred to as bouncing off. The spacecraft doesn't actually bounce off the atmosphere and it is slowed by its interaction with the atmosphere and it also changes direction due to the gravity of the Earth, but in colloquial terms it's called bouncing off. Bouncing off can only occur for spacecraft approaching from outside of Earth's orbit. Re-entry. When undergoing re-entry, space vehicles experience heat caused by friction and shock forces and also g-forces due to the deceleration. Atmospheric entry is defined as being 100 kilometers, although the atmosphere in fact extends well beyond this. Most space vehicles are designed with a blunt leading edge to create a shock wave which keeps heat at a distance from the vehicle and slows the vehicle's fall. Heat shields are used to protect the vehicle. Too high a g-forces can cause blackout and even death of the crew. Ionization blackout is caused by hot ionized gases which block radio communication during the initial phases of re-entry. Re-entry angle. The steeper the angle of re-entry, the more rapid the deceleration and the greater the heat generated, as well as the greater the g-forces experienced by the crew. Too steep an angle may cause the spacecraft to burn up, or it may be damaged or the crew injured or killed. Too shallow an angle of re-entry may cause the spacecraft to miss its landing zone and expose the heat shields to hot gases for longer, potentially leading to failure of the heat shields. Much too shallow a re-entry angle may cause the spacecraft to skip or bounce off the atmosphere. 